It occurred to me today that when William and Hannah Penn got the charter from the king, I'm not sure he knew what he was giving up. Maybe he would have retained abundant forests, probably more miles of streams and rivers and, and waters than probably any other state in the Union, with the possible exception of Alaska, and a lot of that's just frozen up there, so you probably don't see it that much. And so we appropriately called ourselves Pennsylvania. I remember a colleague of mine wanted a grant citizenship posthumously to William and Hannah Penn. And I said, I can't join that resolution in Congress. We already named the state after them, Penn's Woods. We have a real special place here. We have a real special place. Little did the king know then that uh, science and technology a couple hundred years later would uh, bestow on Pennsylvania another abundant natural resource called natural gas. Now we've learned a lot along the way about extracting natural resources from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and from Penn's Woods, haven't we? Some of the lessons have been positive in terms of economic benefits, some of the Penn's lessons haven't been terribly positive given the recurring challenges we still have because of some of the practices associated with some folks way back when mining coal. Good lessons and bad. We learned some good lessons about harvesting wood. We also learned that clear cutting miles and miles wasn't the best way to do it. So when it comes to Pennsylvania's interest in economic development, it's sincere, it's deep. I think this is potentially a transformational opportunity for our state, and at the same time, we have, we must do it in a way consistent with our commitment to retaining the beauty and the bounty and the pristine condition of Pennsylvanians. Someone told me a long time ago, and I used it when I was governor, I referred to it from time to time, it might have been Jim Scythe, a great friend of mine, been working with me on this project, and he said, Tom, there's an old Indian saying, Native American saying, that says, you don't inherit the earth from your ancestors, you borrow it from your kids. Think about it. That's a pretty good model to work from. So we're going to borrow this opportunity from our children, and what are we going to give to the children when we're done? Well, hopefully, Sustainable economic development for 30 or 40 years. It's there. It exists. That's the potential. I was on a site today that had 80 or 90 folks working at the site, and about 80% of them were local residents from Pennsylvania. Of course, the economic sustainability is real. They call it the Marcellus multiplier, but if you think about natural gas as a cost of production, then I don't think your memory has if your mind leads too far to think about pharmaceuticals, about glass, about steel, and a bunch of other things, and if we can reduce the cost of the consumer, whether the individual homeowner or the manufacturing facility, then suddenly your costs have gone down, and hopefully it makes you more competitive. You're more competitive, you can hire a few more Pennsylvanians. So I think at the end of the day, we are up to the task of not only learning lessons from our own experience as Pennsylvanians of extracting from the gift of natural resources that was just given to us, but frankly, ladies and gentlemen, we can learn from the lessons that other states have had to deal with, both good and bad, they in Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma. And if we do Take all those lessons learned, apply the good ones, avoid the mistakes of the past, are sensitive to the notion that 20 or 30 years from now, we want to make sure that we've got a sustainable economic platform at the same time we did justice to our heritage on the environmental side. We are good stewards of the environment. I'd like to think in the year 2020, someone will write a book and say, or at least a chapter, maybe a book, and say, you know, those Pennsylvanians, they did it right. They had this incredible natural resource because they collaborated, worked on the tough issues together, found common ground, common good solutions to pretty complex problems. They did it right. And the legacy of your legacy, my legacy, and everybody associated with the natural gas industry were one with which we can associate ourselves with proudly for years and decades ahead. So I, want to, I think one of the real challenges we have going forward is uh, a lot of issues that have to be addressed. There's a lot of 
information in the public domain that's accurate. There's a lot of information in the public domain that I consider to be mythology. At the end of the day, facts are stubborn things, and we just have to get some facts out there so people can better understand what the industry can do and will do to build a sustainable economic model and be true to our commitment to the environment. So it's a great pleasure to share these couple of thoughts with you. I've been working with the industry. I think uh, identifying some guiding principles down the uh, down the road that we can all embrace, not just as an industry, and not just as the legislature. As I said before, the perspective my team and I are going to bring to this isn't necessarily the industry's perspective. It's not going to be the perspective of the House or the Senate. I'd like to think, as I said to somebody out front, this is the first time I've felt like a governor since the last time I was governor. It's a big issue for Pennsylvania. Great potential for Pennsylvania. Great opportunity for Pennsylvania. 